let's begin with a situation. You finally get home after getting fired from your 9 to 5 job that's definitely not as hard as dreaming. But a real job doesn't suck the soul out of you, you know what I mean? So... You walk into your apartment that you have to share with three families and see your significant other is waiting for you on the couch. Oh, she's crying. You don't care. So you calmly ignore her and walk into the other room. Hop on your PC and get ready to game. You begin to hear muffled screams from beyond the door, so you put on your $17.99 Koshin headphones your mom got you for your birthday four years ago. You're finally ready to do the hobby you've been doing for the last 22 years of your life. Then... It happens. You don't want to play these games. These games are ass. Call of Duty. More like... Call of... Duty, Cyberpunk 2077. You better wake the fuck up, Samurai. Because Keanu Reeves is gonna turn your RTX 4090 into a nuclear reactor the moment he materializes on screen. Guys, I think it worked. So maybe you pull out Old Faithful. God, no. Okay, you obviously need a new game to play. That'll fix your problems, right? And at this point, you hear the sound of the car you share with your significant other start up. It drives off. So you're alone. All alone. But now you get to play a new game. You haven't picked up a new game in years. This is exciting. Let's see. Mm, no, maybe. This game looks like trash. Yes, this is the one. This game looks sick. Magic and swords and fighting. Wow, you can't wait to play it. So you check your bank account and wow, man, that's like really, really low. I mean, are you sure you even want to be? But this is a valuable investment and Dragon's Dogma 2 seems like it's right up your alley. You put in the necessary information and Wait for your game to install. And hey, you just got home from a tiring day. So you head off to nap with the dreams of the adventures your new game might take you on. Jam a man of fortune and Jay must seek my fortune. Henry Avery's 1994. What? What is that? Your eyes open. And you see your new game is already loaded up. You climb into your chair, hit start game, and... Yes! Let's create a ca- Well, I mean, your computer had been on for a long time, so... The crash was... inevitable. So... You load up Dragon's Dogma 2 again, start to create your character, and fight. Okay. What the fuck? So you do what you always do whenever you have tech problems. You search it on YouTube. Yeah, this one looks pretty good. Graphics drivers. Outdated drivers can cause crashes. Okay. This one's giving some good advice. Your excitement is now reignited. Yes! Your epic adventure awaits. You and your epic character on to conquer amazing adventure. And then reality hits you. You're in the dark, with no money, disappointed by a game. And then the questions fill your head. Why did gaming feel so much better all those years ago? How did I get hooked on a hobby that constantly exploits me? Was it really better when I was a kid? Although that totally hypothetical situation was a little hyperbolized, I think it shares a worrying sentiment that is growing within modern gaming. Tell me, when was the last time you were disappointed with the state of a new game you just got? Or even at the very least were extremely cautious when buying a new game? DISAPPOINTED! It is such a shame that this has become the norm, for not only games, but also technology. I'm sure we all remember this reveal of the groundbreaking Xbox 360 Kinect. You ever wonder what the bottom of an avatar shoe looks like? Well, bam!
There it is. Nowadays, you just don't know what you're going to get. And that is such a shame. And it creates such a level of distrust within the actual consumers of these games. Gaming studio heads have just become like little greedy little goblins just trying to steal everything. And they've fallen in love with releasing games in a state where they're just bound to disappoint and not meet expectations. Oh. I summon Pot of Greed to draw three additional oh cards from my deck. And I summon Pot of Greed to draw three additional cards from my deck. In fact, it's gotten so bad, some of them even admit it. And as developers, when you work on a game, you want to get that game out there. And that almost seems like, for us, that's the finish line. But in reality, it's going to be the starting line. They know that if they just slap Master Chief or the name Bethesda on the front of the box, people are going to buy it. Gone are the days of actually setting out a complete and polished product. These massive companies with these huge analytical teams just with terabytes of data on consumers and people that buy games realize you and I, we're gonna buy the game no matter what. And their main goal is just to release the game by a deadline rather than what's gonna provide the most satisfaction to us. That leads to like releases looking like this. Is this acceptable? There is no reason that the quality of a product worth 60 to $70 should function like this when there were legendary games 10, 15, 20 years ago that delivered more for less and are of higher quality than normal AAA, nah, fuck it, quadruple A titles that honestly play the gaming landscape now. Sure, these problems get fixed eventually, but oh my god, if I request a few days off of work only for a game to function like this? Nah, I'm definitely hate tweeting all day from a burner account. But this isn't even the worst of shady practices these large game studios perform. And this example is heartbreaking for me to even bring up. Today is September 9th, 2014. The world of gaming is in for a canon event that will shake the grounds on which games are released to this very day 10 years later. Bungie was on the heels of producing the most successful and innovative video game franchise of all time, and after six years of development, their new installment into the gaming landscape was on the way. It was poised to change gaming forever. And it did. It was its fate. It was Destiny. Destiny was hyped to be a legendary space opera that had an amazing story and once again, innovative gameplay. Bungie's background had fans dying at the thought of what they could do with an MMO-like game in the FPS genre that they absolutely owned at the time. Players logged in on launch day, excited for this grand story with twists and turns that would one-up the original Halo games. And the story! What is the- I don't know. These bosses are really gonna have a lot of health. I mean, you guys are gonna be shooting these guys for at least three weeks apiece. But you'd be hard pressed to remember much that happened in Destiny's story, let alone understand them. Because the entire game is a repetitive grind. Every single mission is exactly the same thing. Walk here, defend Call of Duty Ghost. Walk here, defend Evil Sir. You don't know who the bad guys are other than the fact that they're bad because the sphere is good, so now these guys are bad and they just showed up and they took everything. Cutscenes are kept to a bare minimum limiting story to vague exposition dumps before and after missions. It's not a new or effective way to unintrusively tell a story though. Like, why am I killing these guys? Yeah, they're big and bad and they're evil and all that shit, but why is it happening? That's it? What the fuck? Son of a bitch! But some players notice something. 
there was missing content from the trailers and promotional material that wasn't in the game at all. The same Dreadnought we would see released later in The Taken King. It was said that the entire last third of the main game took place on the Dreadnought, and we've seen the Dreadnought in a few trailers before Destiny released, supporting this even more. And then after a few months of digging, the players found out that the next three expansions that Destiny was going to sell were supposed to be in the game at launch. You're telling me that I'm gonna have to pay 80 more dollars to get content that was supposed to already be in the game? There is absolutely no way. Are you fucking- <laughs> This set a precedent within the gaming community that actions like this were acceptable. I mean, Destiny was incredibly successful and eventually turned into a great game, but only when those expansions and the Taken King came out. And it's such a shame to see almost every game now pull stunts like this. The oversaturation of microtransactions and sucking every penny out of the consumer like it's an Aurelian Soul's Breath of Light has also made it when you do find a game that's in somewhat of a good state to play, most of the cool shit in the game is behind the absolute death of gaming. The Battle Pass! That kind of looks like the Battle Pass. Yeah, I was gonna say, it looks like the Battle Pass. It doesn't look like the Battle Pass. Definitely a Battle Pass. That should look like the Battle Pass. That's, That's what, what I'm saying. saying. Imagine if instead of buying all these items with your, your hard earned money, they were in the game, ready to earn, and meant something. Oh, you got the John Wick skin in Fortnite. Yeah, that's cool. How about you go put some real hair on your chest, buddy, and earn recon in Halo 3 after completing the near impossible Vidmaster achievements? Oh, you spent 47 days of in-game time grinding to tier 99 of the Battle Pass? And you couldn't play the last week it was active? Guess you'll never get that reward. Boo-hoo, you should have coded a bot to do it for you. Somehow this plague has infected every inch of the gaming landscape to the point you can't even escape it. The only game I've ever seen do a Battle Pass right is Halo Infinite, where the battle passes never expire. All right, and I'm not stupid. I do understand that free-to-play games are gonna need to generate revenue somehow, but holy shit, I'm not paying for a full price game and then buying a battle pass every two months because the studio realized their game sucks and no one is playing it, so they need to run their actual loyal players dry. It's this level of exploitation that ruins the feeling of games. It's been so long since I felt the love of a woman. It's been so long since I felt the love poured into a game resonate with me, and it's infuriating that every game isn't like that. Battle passes have the same vibe that loot boxes used to have. Remember when everyone absolutely hated loot boxes and they band together to oppose them? Which is super ironic because now the most viewed video on YouTube is a loot box video. Why can't we just do the same to battle passes? I mean, just knowing there is a battle pass waiting for me the moment I load up a game makes me so distrustful of the product and makes me fear the level of quality within the game. It's terrible that I feel like I struck gold after playing Baldur's Gate 3 because the game was completely functional and it felt like it was created for the sole purpose for me to have fun. It sucks that I have no faith whatsoever that I will ever feel that way towards a game again. And if I do, it's down to extremely dumb luck. It just feels like that every game is out to get the most money out of you. When did games not be about fun? Hopefully, if you get one thing out of this is that this distrust that is now built into the supplier and consumer relationship within the gaming community is going to kill gaming. It's the reason why you sit there and hate games when you used to love them years ago. It's the reason why you wait until the terrible IGN review comes up to see if you actually want to buy a new game. You're scared for what your money's really going to get you. Or at least, I know I am. This needs to change. But this can only change if we change. If we don't accept the bare minimum. If we require a game to actually work at launch. Video game studios only do this because we reward them. Let's stop rewarding them. Let's take video games back to a place of well-crafted love projects. But... Why does it matter? It's probably already too late.